Okay, guys, so this is what I'm going to be doing today. I am taking out this side of my cylinder head here. Um, basically, if you guys have been following me, I got the engine installed and I started it. And I discovered that there's a noise coming from this side of the engine block. Okay, guys, I have a bad head. So as you can see, I disconnected the fan belt, everything, all the belt, the surfacing belt. Nothing is spinning. And that noise is coming from here. So I have a bad head. So anyway, I'm going to go and uh, I'm going to disconnect this. Not engine block, but head. So, um, what I'm going to do now is, if you can look at here, that's the uh, camshaft bolt. And it was... When I ran it, it was moving up and down like that, and so that tells me that the camshaft here uh, is uh, bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out, and I'm going to be um, taking it to the machine shop. Basically, I contacted the eBay seller who sold me this engine and said, Hey, what's going on? I have a, you know... I think I have a bad head so they said that they're willing to refund partial uh, they're willing to partially refund some of the money so I could take the head to uh, get it rebuilt so that's what I'm doing they refunded me $500 um, so that I could get this thing rebuilt so uh, if you've never taken out a head before uh, this could be a video for you um, if you own a Tundra um, so this is what I've done so far. I disconnected all the wires that's um, connected to the engine or to the plenum here. Okay, all the holes and wires. Uh, this is the uh, PVC uh, hose that goes to here. Uh, everything, this pl basically this plenum has to come off. Okay, uh, I disconnected the fuel injector. Uh, uh, plugs here all eight of them okay I did the same thing to, uh, to the other side and so um, what I'm gonna do now is oh, what I, I what I did is that I just that connected all the water hoses to okay this goes to the heater core so that you could get heat in your um, in the cabin uh, so all of the electrical uh, the imajigger that connects to the plenum you have to take out okay you have to remove and everything that's connected to the to, to this side of the head here needs to be removed including the spark plug uh, coils there okay and what I did also is that uh, I disconnected a uh, water hose so that as you can see here water can drain okay and uh, for those of you who's never drained uh, coolant or water from uh, your Tundra, uh, just because you disconnect water hoses up in the radiator area doesn't mean that all the water is drained out. So I want to show you uh, something here. You see that little thingy there that's dripping out right there? Okay, you see that little gold copper bolt right there? Right above that little hole that's draining. Well, if you uns if you unscrew that and loosen that bolt, water will pour out of the engine, just like this. Okay. So this is to make sure that all the water has come out. So when you remove your head, um, there's no more water in the engine block. Okay. So aside from that, I've also and I'll show you. I've also, uh, let's see, okay, this little nipple right here, okay, on the radiator, this is to, uh, uh, loosen so that water can come out, so I've done that. There's one right behind here I couldn't get to, okay, like the other, uh, the, that little water inlet, outlet, like down there. There's one right behind this, which I can get to, but that's okay. So that's what you have to do. So now, 
comes the tedious part of disassembling, uh, removing the fr uh, fan shroud here. Okay, this is the French fan shroud. And so that I can remove that fan too, so that I can um, get into the timing belt because in order for you to, um, let's see. So in order for you to remove the um, engine head on this side, you have to remove the timing belt, which is right here. As you can see, I have uh, removed the cover because I wanted to check out why it's making so much noise from this side of the engine. So I removed the cover already, but that's the timing belt right here. And uh, so I have to uh, remove everything. Basically, everything here needs to be removed. Okay, so that's what I have to do. And uh, so if you're interested in watching what, how I'm doing this, just follow along with me. Okay guys, so I have the uh, the fan, well, the fan shroud is almost ready to come out. As you can see it's wobbly right now because it's the all the bolts are gone. So basically you have to remove this bottom sh uh, shroud here. And to do that, there's this little clip right here. I don't know if you can see. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, there's this little metallic clip right here. Okay, I don't know if you can see. But there, that's the clip. So, uh, in order for you to take out the bottom fan shroud, oops, sorry, you'll have to. Uh, I'm doing this with one hand. You'll have to maneuver the camera underneath like this and pick out the fan shroud like like that. Okay. There you go. It's a little clip like this right here that you have to remove from the fan shroud here. And you do the same to the other end. And so I'm going to put this on pause so that I can show you how, to, uh, so, uh, how it looks like. Okay, so now you have your two little clips removed from the lower shroud. What you do is just take them out carefully like that now you want to be careful because this is plastic and you know how with plastic everything dries plastic dries out as time passes by so that's how you remove the bottom of the fan shroud so then the, the fan shroud here is ready to be removed from the top right so let's go up let's go to the top side and remove it um, Okay, so this is the top side right here, and basically, grab it, and it comes out. And make sure that's not hanging onto, hanging onto anything. So now you have a big area here to work with, and you don't have to remove your radiator, but you have to remove the fan right here. Okay, so that's that. Um, let's see. I'm gonna put this on hold so I could put this to so I can situate my camera. Okay, guys. So this is what I've done so far. I uh, <coughs> I removed the plenum here, so you can see here everything's ex exposed here. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to be blocking the uh, intake manifold here off. Well, actually, I'm going to block on that side so that no, uh, nothing will fall into there. And I'm going to use duct tape, okay? I'm going to put duct tape there so that nothing will fall into the intake manifold. And then after that, I'm going to remove uh, the um, coil here. And I'm going to start removing the uh, head here. And I'll do that. I'm going to speed this up so you can see what I'm doing.
Okay, guys, so I am ready to pull out the head. I, uh, I made a couple mistakes uh, trying to unbolt the head, and I'll show you the mistakes after I pull it out. And uh, if you're taking out your head, your cylinder head like I am, uh, you might want to watch this uh, part because it could be useful to you and so that you won't make mistakes like I have. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward this so you can see what I'm doing. Okay guys, so I got it out and I'll show you my mistakes. What I should never have done was uh, remove this shield. It took, it took me so much time trying to remove this seal, shield out, okay? It just kills time, so don't do what I did. So, um, and I, you know, you sh I should never have removed this shield. And what I did wrong also was that I should never have removed these bolts right here for the uh, exhaust manifold here. Should never have done that. The reason is because there is a, <coughs> the engine mount, it sits right underneath here and there's no access to this bolt. So what I learned is that I should never have removed this, uh, these bolts because it just takes a lot of time. And uh, if you want to do this, just uh, remove the head bolt, unbolt this part. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, unbolt this part and uh, move the exhaust pipe to the side. And uh, don't forget there's a bolt right here for the wiring harness. And so... Uh, Excuse me. Uh, unbolt the wiring harness bolt here, and you should be fine. And uh, what I did was I dropped the I dropped this the follower here, and the shim fell out. So what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm I'm going to take this to the repair shop and have this thing rebuilt and once it's rebuilt I'll show you the outcome of it okay and I'll show you my mistakes uh, from my down under okay down under the car okay live and learn right I'm trying to show you this so that you won't have to do what I do uh, you won't follow my, my mistakes I should never have unbolted that bolt right there see this this pipe right here that goes here, that goes to this down pipe where it meets the uh, exhaust manifold. Uh, you should never, well, maybe I, it was okay. But I unbolted that and uh, disconnected the oxygen sensor uh, plug as well up there. And it's right there. I'll show you. <sighs> Here it is. This is the oxygen sensor right here. You have to remove that. So now I can remove the exhaust manifold here. Okay, and that's that, guys. This is the oil, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, the oil dipstick for the engine. So it's almost impossible not to remove this. Okay, the reason is because uh, the air conditioning compressor sits right here okay and uh, you cannot get a uh, anything a tool there to remove that bolt so that's why that came out like that but uh, yeah fun time uh, uh, gosh well anyway um, I'm gonna take this to the machine shop and 
we'll go on from there and I'll show you how I took this out see all of these right here well these are how I laid it out this is the uh, cam these these are the drive of the camshaft and I laid the uh, uh, cap uh, bearing caps here uh, in this fashion okay so that's how it is this thing right here goes like that okay so fun time guys fun time so anywho uh, stick around uh, we'll have more episodes coming uh, the next step is once I get this thing rebuilt I'm gonna reinstall everything and so that's that I'll see you uh, once this thing is b uh, built um, I'll see you then